The Kazukian Network presents Grind Set Inside the Mind of Successful Entrepreneurs with your host, Cynthia Daniels and William Sprague. I think sometimes we overplan things and that can kind of cause a delay or setback. But I would definitely say dive in, you know, get your name started, get your website up, get your business cards. What you're going to learn from a lot of amazing people, uh, what kind of pitfalls that they have, the challenges, but what really made them successful, what made them keep going. Grind Set. Welcome to another episode of Grind Set. I'm your host, Cynthia Daniels, Chief Event Strategist of Cynthia Daniels & Company. And I'm your co-host, Williams D. Brack, Business Development Officer at First Tennessee Bank. So today we have Carly McCullough, who currently serves as the General Counsel of McCullough Law, and she previously served as the Contract Compliance Officer for the City of Memphis. Uh, she's had a very interesting career. We have so much to cover in today's episode. And and. And Attorney McCullough is very much an entrepreneur. Attorney, as we mentioned, um, future restauranteur, magazine publisher. Uh, she worked for the city of Memphis. Now, been an adjunct professor at Lemoyne on, and AKA ain't got to do anything to do with entrepreneur, but <laughs> that's just the breadth and range of things that she's involved in. So make sure you check us out on the Apple Podcast, Stitcher, Tune in or your favorite podcast, and we'll be right back. Grind set on the Kazookian Network. We're getting funky, y'all. The Memphis Park with the Jefferson Davis statue was put up in 1964 during the Civil Rights Movement. <laughs> These were all symbols sure. of an oppression. Sure. These statues need to be in a historical context. They need to be in a museum, a Civil War memorial site. Maybe even be at the ancestral home. All these things are valid places, but a public place of prominence was not where they needed to be. It's Funky Politics on the Kazookian Network. Kazookian! Hey, I'm Carly McCullough, General Counsel of McCullough Law, and you're listening to Grind Set, powered by Kazookian. So as we promised, we have Carly McCullough, who is the General Counsel of McCullough Law, in the studio with us today. We're so excited to have you. Thank you. And we have my co-host, Brock, who's going to also be asking a few questions. Uh, just a fascinating story that we're yeah. unfolding today. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, one of the first things we wanted to ask you, you know, you started working in contract compliance and entertainment industry. Um, that's kind of the, the pillar of your law firm. But... You know, tell us about the first few months of business, because you easily could have worked, um, you know, with the city. You could have just worked under someone else. What made you say, I want to have my own practice? Well, I think we have to go back, take a step back to understand what is contract compliance. OK, okay let's Great do question. that. OK, um, well, that was helpful. Yeah, I was very, very fortunate. Um, Mayor Harrington um, actually thought that I would be an asset to his administration. Wonderful. Um, and he brought me back to Memphis. Uh, and said, hey, I think that this would be good for you um, to serve in the capacity of contract compliance officer for the city of Memphis. Now, what that job does is you are responsible for helping the city increase their diversity numbers. Mm -hmm. So you are working as an advocate for minority and women-owned businesses, as well as small businesses, because before I left, they implemented a program called the Small Business um, Enterprise Program. Mm -hmm. Okay. Sounds like it still continues today. Absolutely, awesome. it does. Um, and so with that, you know, you, the list, the number of companies on that list varies um, from day to day. Okay. But in some, just imagine you're working or having the responsibility of being an advocate for 500 diverse firms. Oh, wow. So 500 diverse firms, you have, uh, you touch them, you reach out to them, you are um, pushing for them, um, a win for them is a win for the city. Right. Um, and so folks often ask me, how do you get into entertainment law? Well, how you get into entertainment law is to be the best at whatever it is that you're doing, okay. whether it's entertainment law or not. Okay. So I think that I performed well in that position and in that capacity okay. and, in, and was able to move on from there and use that as a stepping stone. So my plan was already uh, was always, regardless of who was in office, was to retire um, uh, once I reached the eligibility point 
and to start my own firm. Yeah. So I worked with all of those other companies and saw the Build relationships. The, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Build relationships. Absolutely. Okay. And how long did you give yourself before you said, okay, I'm, I'm going to be able to see a profit in this business? Hmm. Well, um, I tell you, realistically, I wanted to see a profit immediately. Okay. Uh, that was my desire. <laughs> that wasn't reality. But, but you didn't have relationships. Rela- but you had relationships. <laughs> That's, uh, a lot of business owners don't have that when they're starting out. Yes, mm-hmm. but, you know, um, having working with the city of Memphis and government, there's a rule that we always speak about. Okay. You can help as many people as you want, but you just cannot help yourself. Interesting. Okay, that makes no sense to me. I know it does not <laughs> because you're you're on the uh, you're on the capitalist side. Uh, yeah. But when you are in government, that is the rule. You can help as many people as you want, but yeah. you cannot help yourself. Okay? okay. And if you keep that in mind, then you stay uh, out of all sorts of trouble. Oh, fair enough. That, that was the government <laughs> motto. That's right. that should be the government motto. That was our well, motto. Well, well, okay. So I, I do have a couple questions about sure. that. Well, so first of all, you listen to Grind set on the uh, Kazuki network now there are, I've had um, conversations with numerous numerous African American entrepreneurs in the city maybe some other diverse ones who would claim that on the diversity side of doing business with the city doing Harrington that it didn't necessarily improve much oh not true that, that's what I pe- did the that's numbers. what people say. and uh, so I did you, the you have the data. Have data. Me, you have no, the data. Don't have me call them out. I know names. You okay. have the data. I know names. I know numbers. Awesome. Absolutely, okay. people did well. Um, you had multiple folks that were seven figures, and they know I know. And when I see them, you know, they embrace me like, hey, right. <laughs> okay, they're looking but, out. Right, but but here is the 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 reason why you don't hear it. The reason why you don't hear it is because, unfortunately, in this community, yep. they feel that once they uh, it's exposed that they are doing well, they become a target. Mm. Mm. So it's just the truth of the matter. It is what it is. And um, so, therefore, they like to make their money quietly. Well, so I, I just like to make sure, because you hear quiet rumblings about that. Right. And sure. it might be a criticism since Harrington is running again um, this year. And so I'm glad you cleared the record. Right. Now, but I do want to know now, what is your business now? What areas of law are you practicing? Uh, wow. Well, we concentrate in a, a number of uh, areas. We focus on bankruptcy, business formation, business litigation. We do entertainment law. Um, we do family law, which encompasses divorce and uh, child support, custody, adoption, separation, um, social security, disability, wills, trust, nonprofit, mm-hmm. uh, personal injury and labor and employment. So I, I have diverse. to ask a quick question, though. OK, yeah. you, you just named a, a number of areas that you are practicing law in, but sure. it can't just be you doing it. No. <laughs> so I'd love, I'd love for the listeners to know how did you start your company as one entity, sure. one person, sure. and you've now grown it. I'd love to hear That's that a great transition. Question. That's yeah, a great question. we were very strategic mm-hmm. and uh, controlled in our growth. Okay? okay, so immediately, you know, when we came out, um, if if we hadn't have done well in the area in Office of Contract Compliance, okay. then we wouldn't have been as successful as we are now. Okay, because the folks saw that I was an advocate. Mm-hmm. They saw how I battled. They saw how um, at one point in time when contractors came to me and said, "Carly, I can't compete because I'm buying my asphalt from the same people that I have to compete against." Oh, interesting. So therefore, as a lawyer, I'm strategic enough to say, "Okay, well, why don't we carve asphalt out, and then now you can compete labor to labor." Nice. Okay. Okay. So. We all know, they know what was done and how it was done. (laughs) Right. Um, And so with that, they had a confidence level that, okay, yeah, I'm going to try her. Okay. Um, And so they did. But we were very closed and small um, when we started out. But I knew that. And also while I was there under the uh, Harrington administration, um, I had permission to uh, actually have my own practice as long as it did not conflict with right. anything that I was doing with the city of Memphis, okay. Okay? okay? And so I, you know, primarily did a lot on the entertainment side. 
That's okay. a nice sweetheart deal right there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. but you know, it I, it wasn't working during the day. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, in entertainment, you know, it's it's not where you know you have to go before the courts. So okay. I was able to do it once I got off work. Mm-hmm. Then I'd meet with my clients, et cetera. Um, and so my first office was at seven 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 South Main, the okay. old Technicolor uh, building. Mm. Okay. Um, so I had that office for a few years before I retired, and then moved to Cottonwood. But we started out really with a focus on business um, and entertainment um, and then we moved into bankruptcy so those and then family law so those were the four areas the gradual growth Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. those were the four areas but I realized early on I was like oh my god oh my god I can't do all of this work. <laughs> yeah, I can't. And I have can't, a full-time job. Yeah, I can't. Yeah. But but this was after I retired. This was once I launched the firm. Okay. Yeah. Once okay. I launched the firm, I was like, wait a minute. I, and to use your word, which I use frequently, and Brittany will attest to this, I can't be the rainmaker and do all the work. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I <laughs> realized early on yeah. I needed a team. Because um, okay. the business was there, yep. mm-hmm. and I just I could not handle it, um, and so I immediately put an ad uh, at the University of Memphis Law School, um, and um, so I could get a law clerk. And then my mom said, hey, I'll be your office manager. Mm. Now, don't bother her between the hours of 11 and 1. <laughs> because she was also the notary. 11 and 1, that's when the young and the restless and the bold and the beautiful came. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Workplace flexibility. Absolutely. Pretty sweet deal. Wait, it's your mother, yeah. <laughs> now, you listen to Grind Set on the Kazuki Network. Um, attorney Carly McCullough has been so gracious in talking about her start in the business. When we come back, we're going to dive deeper into the business and even the financials. Sure. And so we'll see you shortly. Grind set on the Kazookian Network. Riffin on Jazz. I'm Howard Robertson, one of your hosts for Riffin on Jazz. Riffin is your weekly visit with friends where we dive all in to that classic African American art form called jazz. So don't miss Riffin with me and my man Melvin Massey every week on your favorite broadcast and podcast platforms. Riffin on Jazz on the Kazookian Network. Kazookian. You're listening to Grind Set on the Kazookian Network with your host, Cynthia Daniels, and I'm Brack. We have the attorney, Carly McCullough, here. Mm-hmm. And uh, just a few minutes ago, she was telling us how she got in the business. But now I'm curious about the business overall. Sure. Now, if there's um, a lot of anything, it's attorneys. And they keep graduating from law school, but there's only so much business to go around. So what would you say your competitive advantage is in the marketplace of attorneys? Um, I think that our competitive advantage is that when we we're vested here, you know, and we're in the community, we're Mm -hmm. out, um, we support um, our community. And um, and we again, we had a base. We had a strong base and having a base is important. Mm -hmm. Um, And when you have a history of performance yep. and performance at a high level. Um, it comes across and they know it, they embrace it, and they want to be a part. Mm-hmm. So you have to deliver for your clients. And that's what we do. Um, we invest in you know advertisement for our firm, but okay. nothing beats word of mouth still. Right. Um, you know, we do well for our client. And what we tell our folks is that we don't want to just, you know, be a one off situation for you we Mm want to be the lawyer for your family so when you think that you know mama needs this grandma Mm -hmm. needs this oh we need a will oh they got to go to court for child support Uh uh-oh homie hit a a rough spot over here you (laughs) know we got to file a bankruptcy (laughs) you know so we've got all of those moving pieces right um that we can you know work within our office so that we are known and become known Mm -hmm. as your family's lawyer yeah Mm -hmm. well i have a question so Memphis is such a relationship town, and, yes. and, we, and you just said mama, grandmama, everybody needs to come to your firm. I, I'm curious to know, what is your story? So what made you say, I want to practice law? Like, what was the beginning there? Actually, yeah, great question. I became, a, um, I went to Howard University undergrad, ah, okay. um, and uh, I was an accountant. 
Okay, so I became a CPA. Really? And it was so boring. <laughs> oh, my God. Crunching numbers. Uh, it was really boring. Okay. Um, and so I um, graduated from Howard, and then a company relocated me to Chicago. And then that same company relocated me to Los Angeles. Wow. And then when I was in Los Angeles, I said, okay, well, I want to go to law school. Um, because I'm, one day what, and well, what, what about Los Angeles makes you say I want to go to law school? <laughs> you, I'm thinking you're on so the beach, you're relaxing. I'm never going to Los Angeles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, my mom, she used to look at Perry Mason, you know, <laughs> Perry Mason that. reruns. But yeah. I never, uh, even Mason. though Perry Mason was always on the criminal side, I never wanted to do criminal law. Okay. Hmm. Um, and so I said, you know, it was a plan. I'm going to go to law school. And so I started executing my plan. Okay. I, um, as a uh, mature uh, adult because mm-hmm. I had a career in right. finance and accounting right. and now I was about to make a transition that was totally separate so okay. I needed to do sales so okay. I did pharmaceutical sales and went to law Shout school full time salesman yeah, <laughs> yeah and a lot of people transition careers like that mid, yeah. mid uh, age so yeah that's and, and that was such a great time for me because yeah. I did um, sales and, and I had no sales experience yeah. and I man I just knew I needed to get into sales because I needed to have a flexible schedule here because okay. I did not want to be a broke law student <laughs> Because I'd just been that, you know. So broke, like, broke in no. front of anything sucks. But yeah. wait a minute, broke in LA <laughs> is even worse. I can imagine the cost of broke living out student, there, right? Broke in LA, <laughs> broke in Memphis, broke, oh, broke anything. Oh no, there were too many things I needed right, you to listen, do. And you so. listen to the grind set on the Kazuki Network, and we're talking about not being broke. Don't be broke, <laughs> right? Be broke. Yeah. But but I, I'm kind of confused here, though, yeah. right? Because the the CPA exam yes. is one of the hardest exams yes. in the entire world. To yes, take. and you're like. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to law school, right? But instead of keeping your CPA, you dropped it, right? Well, yes, I don't use it anymore. So I'm not active, okay. but I, I really, um, you know, this is going to sound crazy. I really took the test and became a CPA mm-hmm. versus just an accountant right? so that I could get out of it. Interesting. Makes no sense again. I know it makes no sense. My path makes no sense. I'm really trying to be smart here, okay? (laughs) But I took the exam (laughs) because I never wanted anybody to say, oh, because that's always a question. You're an accountant? Are you a CPA? It it, it Uh, comes, you know what I mean? So I was not going to go through my career. No, I'm not a CPA. (laughs) So I became a CPA so that I could leave the field, but leave the field at a top level That's true. That's nice. a and it, it goes with my personality yeah. you know if we're going to do something we're going to do it right. right you know we're not going to halfway do it okay. so to get out of that field mm-hmm. i became a cpa so that i could get out and go to law school now That's amazing now you're on a law firm yes and you have how many employees well let's see we i was writing them down as you mentioned it we've got 13 plus one so and it's a plus one because you know under the umbrella we no we uh. have um, we have multiple <laughs> businesses yeah, you right. know so uh, we've got a magazine we've got the uh, restaurant so we've got a number of, of things that are under there but just for the the law firm we're at thirteen well let's but, and I'm counting my law clerks too so I don't want to constrict this just to the law firm right sure. here on grind set we want to understand the entire economy yes mm-hmm. so what is your entire business portfolio if you don't mind sharing? sure we have uh, an entertainment memphis magazine okay. um and patrice moses is the editor for that she runs that okay. where can we find that uh actually it's distributed at kroger okay um all kroger's in memphis um okay. they're just i just met with a distributor today day. yeah, exactly oh, yeah, you've seen, seen it there you, <laughs> you go you that's had, it uh, you had kelvin woods with a t-shirt uh, <laughs> uh, yeah absolutely yeah. we Got t-shirt, t-shirt lab on there. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm yeah flipping. We I gotta go pick up a copy. Yeah, well, he just called me. They're out, so we've got to get him more copies. Yeah, so yeah. we're okay. right yeah. now and about to do, to do a new print. Awesome. Oh, it's a quarterly magazine, mm-hmm. um, and so it's a pocket size, and really, it's designed to let you know what's going on in Memphis. Awesome. Um, and we have plans for uh, other cities, but you know, we we focus on you know Memphis first. And okay. and the last one was great. We had Southern um, Southern Heritage Classic in it. Okay. Uh, we had some blues shows. We've got a number of downtown restaurants in yeah. it, so we're trying to grow that. Uh, and but again, Patrice Moses runs that. Okay. And, and Grind Set is going to claim my blessing to be on the cover. Of the next quarter. There we so. go. <laughs> Shameless plug. <laughs> Is that why you're wearing the suit today? <laughs> yeah, and then we have uh, Mahogany Memphis coming. 
Uh, okay. Wait a minute. I like the name. What, yes. is, what is Mahogany Memphis? It sounds Mahogany intri- Memphis is an upscale restaurant. Uh, we It's called uh, Mahogany Memphis, and it is upscale Southern with a dash of Creole. Oh, my gosh. Yes. I'm already hungry. Yes, yes. So we're yeah, excited about that. Drool, <laughs> yeah, you know, we were um, inspired because we do the entertainment yeah. thing. There's some entertainment elements there. Very cool. So Mahogany, we were inspired by the, the, the movie, movie with Mahogany, Diana Ross and Billy. Absolutely. You got it. You got it. You got yeah. it. Morehouse's majorettes yes. were mahogany in motion, and what? that could have been oh, good inspiration okay, as well. Okay. Well, you know <laughs> what? You can see uh, me. I just hit him on the head, ladies yeah, and gentlemen. But our tagline, <laughs> aside from the upscale uh, Southern with a dash of Creole, mm-hmm. is that mahogany is dark, beautiful, rich, and rare. Mm-hmm. I'm all for it. When, when are we opening? Yeah. That's what I need well, to know. Well, we, we just, uh, we have our last uh, inspection this week. Okay. And then we will be applying for our uh, law, our um, liquor license. So we're excited about it. So, so you were a CPA. Now, yes. how helpful is what you learn? It should be an easy question, right? How helpful is what you learn taking and earning your CPA license and running your businesses now? Oh, it is extremely helpful. Um, it, it It is so helpful in that not just running my business, but also serving as a problem solver. Mm-hmm. So with my clients, I'm just not an attorney. Right. Okay? okay, So it's not just legal issues that we solve, but we are a problem solver okay. and understanding, you know, basic reports, um, especially on the bankruptcy side. You know, um, I did, um, I think I did a radio show yesterday or something, and that was part of the the questions that came in, and it was like, well, you know, I've got this this friend, and she hasn't paid her mortgage. She's got a, uh, what do you call it, the reverse mortgage, Mm -hmm. because you're the finance guy. Mm -hmm. So she's got, you've got a reverse mortgage, she's got a reverse mortgage, and she's not paying the taxes, and she, I said, well, how long has she not paid it? Well, she hasn't paid it for mm-hmm. three, four years. Okay, does she have money? Does she have income coming in? Well, she's got a retirement, and she's got Social Security. Yep. Well, what? She's got money, but she's not paying to keep a roof over her head. Right. So, problem solved. She said, well, can you do a bankruptcy? Absolutely, we can push the button on a bankruptcy, but that's not what we're here to do. Let's look at, there's a, uh, uh, there's a problem here. So we've got to understand what the problem is so that we can solve that. Because obviously she's got the money, yep. but she's not paying the money. Mm. So we've got to identify that and fix that before we push the button on a bankruptcy. Because if we push the button on a bankruptcy, she's going to be out of there right. in two months when she doesn't pay. Now, I'm glad right. you did that because Memphis is number one for Chapter 13 bankruptcy. Probably. Chapter 11 bankruptcy? No, definitely not. Chapter Chapter 11 is business, so no. 13, Chapter 13 yeah. mm-hmm. and 7. Mm-hmm. Uh, one, yeah. of the, one of those two. Yeah, are both very, of those. There was an article out a while ago about how bad we were doing and how attorneys were staring them into these bankruptcies. Okay, and so for somebody over here like me, can you break down the differences between the bankruptcies? Sure. Okay. Um, you know, the Chapter 7, mm-hmm. that's pretty much a fresh start, okay? okay. You're going to get a discharge immediately okay. for the most part okay? okay and immediate maybe four to six months okay, okay. so you're not going to have to pay anybody there okay. are certain debts that you can't discharge uh in bankruptcy but outside of those debts you, you, right you know outside Saturday. of those few you know <laughs> debts then you're gonna have a fresh start okay a chapter 13 is what they typically call is a wage earner so that means that you're going to pay typically 60 months. You know, you're going to have and, and they cha- they file a chapter 13 when you've got a secured asset that you're trying to maintain. OK. And it could be a house, a car. Those are usually the, the items that push you into a 13. You want to stop a foreclosure or you want to stop an eviction or you want to stop a repossession of your car. So okay. that prompts the chapter 13. And a chapter 11 is if you have uh, a business of some sort and you just need to reorganize. So we had a number of chapter 11s um, when they changed some of the laws on the daycare side. So we had some daycares that got hit with that. Mm -hmm. Um, When we went into a recession, we had some real estate um, owners, uh, investors rather, that got hit uh, when, you know, the market wasn't going so well. So, you know, they just needed some some little little time to reorganize here and, and get back out there. Now, speaking okay. of bankruptcy, what was your credit like before you went into business? Um, actually, I think it was pretty good, actually, because I bought a home uh, one year after retiring. 
I asked that because that's one of the grind set major keys is sure. so far all the entrepreneurs we had on our, our show had great to excellent credit before sure. they moved into entrepreneurship. Yeah, yeah, that is, that is key. Um, you know, and like I said before, it was one, I didn't buy, purchase a home when I was with the city of Memphis. I retired and then uh, purchased the home. And then one of the other major keys here on Grind Set on the Kazuki Network is the amount that you look at your finances, right? And so as far as your business is concerned, how often are you looking at your numbers? Every day. Okay. Every day. Um, you know, and from a banking perspective, you can appreciate that. You know, I have a I trust can. account. And, you know, with, with any type of account, you've got fraud, Okay. Oh, man. Yeah. And because we're in that personal injury space, mm. and that means that we've touched a lot of folks, Yeah. Um, you just have fraud. So I have to look at it literally every day to Got make it. sure that, you know, checks that I didn't write, you know, mm-hmm. aren't coming through there, and I've got to stay on top of it. I mean, I've been to the police department. Wow. Man, it's, it, it happens. So I have to stay vigilant on that. Okay. I would love that as a banker. That's pretty good. <laughs> hey, you, you said a couple of things that bankers would love. One is strategic controlled growth. Yes. And then looking at your numbers on a consistent basis. That's oh, music yeah. to our ears, quite oh, yeah. frankly. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's why I got a couple of bankers, you know, no of bankers knocking right. on the door. <laughs> <laughs> but that's something entrepreneurs need to know, right? Yeah. Someone who's starting um, from the ground up needs to have good credit. It needs to be aware of their finances going into opening a business. Yeah. And, but, and, and you need to know the why of your numbers, right? If right. something goes up, you do well one particular month, right. why? If right. you do bad one particular month, why? Yeah, but you know those. I think you guys were talking about small programs, um, and uh, there was another. What was uh, it? Epicenter. Epicenter, Epicenter. is a great resource you know, for that, entrepreneurs. That type of resource, and then mm-hmm. they've got someone at five 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 Bill. They've got some various loan programs that the are Office out there. Office of Business Diversity and Compliance. Yeah, with they've Joe, got some Joanne Massey. Massey yeah. yeah, they've got some good programs there that entrepreneurs can lean on because. You know, what I learned from dealing, trying to grow a business is that you don't go to a bank when asking for some money if you don't have any. There you go. What? There you go. I had to learn that. (laughs) You you don't have what? If you don't, you think, oh, I don't have any money. I'm going to go to the bank and I'm going to get some money. No. Wow. Okay. You better go to them folks when you got some money. Okay. Because they're not going to give you any money if you don't have any money. I think, in in defense, right? Especially at a place like First Tennessee, banking Mm -hmm. has changed, right? So it, it it used to be that you could go into a bank and ask for a loan. And if you didn't have good credit or you didn't have any money, right. you had to leave. Mm-hmm. But now they have resources internally in the bank like Operation Hope, which will help you fix your credit, which will help you build up what you need to actually get the loan. Well, that's so, good to know. So, bank, so banking has changed a bit. Yeah. So. Well, look, Brackett's dropping nuggets. Carly's dropping nuggets. We're going to pause right here. Um, when we come back, I want to go back to Mahogany Memphis yes. because I really want to dig deep into that and figure out uh, how we can support you. So stay tuned. We will be right back. Grind set on the Kazuki Network. Best in blue. Well, great is an acronym. It stands for Gang Resistance Education and Training. We'll teach them how to be good communicators. We'll talk about bullying, things like that. On the Katsukian Network. So we're back with Carly McCullough, General Counsel of McCullough Law and Proprietor of Mahogany Memphis. If you were tuning in with the last segment, we found out that she is launching Mahogany Memphis, an upscale Southern cuisine restaurant with the Creole flair. Did I get it right? Close with a dash of Creole. With a dash dash of Creole. Creole. There we go. So I'm excited to hear a little bit more about the menu and and what made you say, I want to launch a restaurant, right? Where'd they come from? Well, I think we did a project in 2000 called the Ivy. Okay. Um, And people kept asking me, when are you going to do it again? When are you going to do it again? Mm -hmm. And it was a, you know, component of it had a private membership club to it. Okay. Um, and uh, it was a pretty nice place. Nice. Um, we did it, if I must say so, my team did a really, really good job. Um, but, you know, we didn't last. Okay. Um, we ha- Unfortunately, we had a chef that demolished it. Oh, wow. Literally. Okay. Did you not have fried yeah. lobster? Yeah. So, um, but, you know, with that, um, I had the experience there mm-hmm. and it was a great um, time. Okay. 
And how my mind works is with that CPA and that background, I often crank out business plans and put them on the shelf. Okay. So crank out and and how I far I get it just depends. Like with Entertainment Memphis, Entertainment Memphis literally um, has been a, in a box since two thousand and nine. <laughs> and when I say in a box, wow. I'm talking about the business cards, wow, uh, the folders, wow. the the sales piece, pieces. Okay. Everything was in a box, ready to go. Okay. It just needed the right person yeah. because I realized that I can't do it all. Right. Um, right. And so one day, one of my um, associates, actually the one who um, used to process my bankruptcies, um, she decided, you know what, I, I want to do something different. And I said. Hmm. Okay, well, let me okay. pull this out the shelf for right. you. Right, you already had yeah. it ready. Awesome. And mahogany. Yeah. Mahogany was another one that was sitting on the shelf. Okay. Um, mahogany was actually supposed to be right by the Civil Rights Museum. That yeah. would have been perfect. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, you know, and uh, I went and I spoke to the folks that uh, had the building yeah. and told them about the great stuff, the location, because they had for lease and for sale on the building. And I had. Prince Mongo owned the lot next door. And, okay. And I went to them and said, you know, none of these businesses really focus in on the Civil Rights Museum. Yeah. Right. And I said, they've got buses lined up. None of the restaurants downtown even face it. Yeah. Right. You hear me? That's so a good there was point. nobody giving any attention. So the person that I was talking to, um, the person that owned the building mm-hmm. was Central Barbecue. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So yeah. you know, and and they were wise enough to invest in the business. Yeah. Um, but I I think that they just kind of forgot about it. Yeah. Uh, until I kind of knocked on door and, you and said, "Hey, them. you know, this is what I want to do here." And yeah. when I told them the numbers, you know, yeah. that the Civil Rights Museum was doing, they're like, "Hold on." Hmm. We might need to rethink this whole lease sale thing going on. Yeah. And so I commend them on just doing a, a great job on okay. bringing it to life. Well, my thing is timing is everything. Absolutely. So I, it wasn't the time. Right. It wasn't the time. And so you've now found a new location. Yes. Um, what will be on the menu? I'm curious to hear that. Yeah, we will have uh, shrimp and grits. Mm. We'll have oxtails and grits. Okay. Deep fried lobster. Yeah. Okay. Shout we'll out to have, the deep fried lobster. Yeah. <laughs> Cajun, uh, Cajun uh, Cornish hen. Yeah, I we'll can't think have, of any other place that has this kind of menu. Keep going, and please. and that's what one of the things that we really wanted to do. I've got yeah. two partners, okay, um, uh, Veronica Yates and uh, Mr. Floyd Beasley, and we have an outstanding chef. His name is Chef Christopher Hudson. Okay, okay. shout right out to it. yeah, shout very out to excited. Him. Um, and he he's an instructor at La Cole Culinaire. Okay, um, and he's worked at a number of restaurants around town. But he's just a super talented yeah. gentleman. Um, that really we wanted to bring something different to Memphis. I love that. And yeah. I'll tell you, this is also perfect timing because I'm now uh, gearing up for my fourth annual Memphis Black Restaurant Week yes. in 2019. Yes. So that's going to be the first week of March. Looking and forward to it. We would absolutely love to have you. Absolutely. And you know what? And folks told me that I needed to <laughs> talk to you, but I'd never met you well, before. Well, look at the eyes, right? on the grind. Yes. On the grind set. Yes. We're networking. They were like, you need to talk to her. She yeah. does a restaurant. You don't know her. Right. You know? And I said, oh, wow. This is perfect. Okay. And, and yeah, I'm yeah. So excited to meet you. I'm excited, too. And, and the unique thing around Memphis Black Restaurant Week, not only were the numbers just out of this world, we pretty much quadrupled everyone's business Bragging yourself. in one week. Bragging Am I yourself. Excellent. Bragging yourself. Do it. Excellent. I want to hear the numbers. I, I saw the need to create. I want to hear right? the numbers. Excellent. You want to hear the numbers? So the first year we did uh, $85,000 in one week for eight restaurants. I'd like to make 85000 in a week. Year, <laughs> year wow. two, we did uh, $175,000 oh, for holy 11 cow. restaurants. Last year was a little over three hundred thousand. So we've done. Oh, you go, girl. So thank you. That's some black so we, girl magic, right there. We have there. done half <laughs> a million dollars <laughs> in three years in black in the black yeah, community. That's awesome. Um, thank you. And one thing I pride myself on is trying to find unique restaurants within that week. So I think the stigma in the black community is that we only do soul food and hot wings. And this is my way of showing all of Memphis like that of we have all types of cuisine yeah. uh, so your restaurant would just stand out and Thank I you. know people Thank would you. love to participate and, and we're support. in a great location okay. um, you know where the uh, Ben Hooks library is I know the yes. Ben Hooks okay library. you know where La Baguette is yeah La Baguette. we're in that mall <sighs> 
perfect and it's plenty of parking plenty that's one i'm telling you i love downtown plenty but sometimes of parking. Oh, it, it me just too. it me discourages too. me yes me too <laughs> so I free know. parking people yes absolutely <laughs> So we're excited and, you know, because of location, we are inside of that mall. So we definitely are going to have to, you know, push, you know, where we are. Definitely. Um, and, you know, I've got a database. My team folks uh, have okay. a database, too. So. Well, now you have the Memphis Black Restaurant yes! database. So I'm we excited. Would I'm excited. love to support your opening yeah. in whatever way we can. Yeah, that's awesome. So when is that week? So the week is not until March of got 2019. Excellent. So I think Excellent. if anything, you'll be able to work out any kinks. You'll have oh, a good flow. So no doubt. by the time we get there, it'll be perfect yes no <laughs> doubt about it we'll yeah. work so, out all the kings so look yeah. you, so in law right you got 10 different areas that you practice in yeah then you have a magazine sure. then you have a restaurant what does all that have to do with each other right now do i go to the restaurant read law books in the magazine at the same time like how does this work well you know what everything is relationship driven mm. everything is relationship driven and everything is about the network Okay. So, you know, my clients, you know, they come to my law firm. Mm-hmm. They still want to know what's happening in Memphis. What What is there? Where can I take somebody? I've got mm-hmm. a visitor. Where can I take a, a person here? Yeah. You know, and then everybody here wants a social. Yeah. You know, when I yeah. started uh, the Ivy in 2000, I was going to do a nonprofit. And in my mind, I just always have to be busy. And so I was going to do a nonprofit. <laughs> and then one of my friends was like, uh-uh, you need to solve my social woes. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> so thus the Ivy was born. Right. You know, gotcha. I sat on, you know, at a computer, typed out and then executed. Maybe. You know, part of doing business and starting a business is the execution part. Right. Right. We all have great ideas, but it's being able to put those ideas on paper right. and then putting them on paper and then taking the next step towards you know bringing it to market right Right. okay Mm -hmm. folks i've heard so many people say oh i had that idea (laughs) and it could have been a great idea (laughs) but they had no clue how to bring it to market you know and so yeah we help people do that all the time at mccullough law you know how to bring your idea to life but on one hand right you got law which is time uh takes a lot of time and human capital sure but then you throw a restaurant on top of that where you have to source your food right deal with health situations and inventory and lower wage um skill set like soft skills when you're hiring for the restaurant now how do you plan to balance all this because a lot of time intensive you reach out and you get the best folks to do what it is that they do sound like warren buffett I mean, you literally, you have to get, you know, so many times when we start a business, you know, we think about, oh, I, got, I can't afford it. Right. You know, when I started the law firm, yeah. I didn't I didn't get to the position where I was making money yeah. so okay. that I could say, oh, man, I can't afford this. No, mm-hmm. I, I mean, I, literally, I was one month out and I was a- advertising for a law, f- a law clerk. Because I knew this the is what I needed. I needed a there. team, right. you know. Right. And so everyone in my firm, they fully understand. Carly yep. is the rainmaker, correct? <laughs> but, Absolutely. But they Car- know Carly is the rainmaker. And then my team, you know, they know, okay, I've got to do this. I'm responsible for that. So it works like a wheel, you know. It, it's it's moving forward. Mm-hmm. Now, with 13 people, right, as, as a sole rainmaker and just opening up an office in Nashville. Yeah. Somebody else gonna have to start making rain, like uh. Yeah, they will. They will. <laughs> and, and so, what does that skill set look like as you're looking to hire another rainmaker or promote one of your associates into a partner as they can bring in business? Well, the, you don't get to the point of partner and bring in business. Okay. Mm-mm. You got to get to the point where you. This is what you do, and you're bringing in business, and that's how partners recognize you. Okay, you understand. So you don't get to. You know, it's not like oh, you're promoted based on time here. No, you're promoted based on the fact that you took the initiative to be a rainmaker. Mm -hmm. Anybody can be a rainmaker. (laughs) Major key alert. Take initiative. Take initiative. Act like like an owner. Act like it. You see what I mean? But the one thing about being an owner, Mm -hmm. and so when I look for for who's got partner potential with my firm. Yeah. Right. The one thing you cannot be as a rainmaker, first of all, and as a boss in general. Boss. You cannot be selfish. Mm. Right. You see what I'm saying? Right. Because there's so many times when I pay my staff before I pay me. Mm-hmm. 
So if I know I've got a, a member on my team that's pushing to be, oh, I'm a partner because I've been here longer. I don't care about all that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't care about all that. Because guess what? I will promote you to a partner and then you'll destroy all my work because I know your character. Right. Well, you know, so uh, this weekend we had a company banquet and the guy from um, uh, Pepsi who invented Hot Cheetos came to town. Mm-hmm. And his story is he started as a janitor and he took some Hot Cheetos um, home one day. Well, he took some Cheetos home one day without the cheese flavoring and put some um, uh, chili spices on it. And then his wife was just the backbone of him, of course. Yeah. Always. Encouraged him to call the president of the company. I love it. He did. A janitor, no high school education. Amazing. Um, Great story. Called the president of mm-hmm. the company, told him he had an idea for a product. And now that product's doing over a billion. He's the VP there. Yes. Millionaire. Excellent. Um, As well he should be. Yeah, take initiative. Yes. Uh, and he's a professor at multiple colleges. Love Still it. no high school diploma, no GED. Love right. it. But that, that's an awesome but, story. But he acted like an owner. You, and, that, and that is, you know, people say, oh, well, I'm, I'm, I want to be that and I'm next in line. No. Those characteristics are going to come out. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Those characteristics are going to come out. But yeah. if you, you know, I knew early on whatever dime I made, I'm going to have to share it yeah. because I need a team. And the team works, whether it's McCullough Law, whether it's Mahogany, whether it's the magazine, it's a team effort. And you go and you try and get the best talent that you can possibly afford. So your delegation skills are on fleek is what I'm hearing. Yes, sir. (laughs) People still say on fleek. Is that still a thing? I don't think they do. I'll let you fly today. (laughs) Well, look, Carly, before we get out of here, I have to ask you, you've dropped a lot of nuggets, but what advice would you give to a person who's listening right now? who really wants to be an entrepreneur. They don't know where to start. Brittany's What's- sitting over here in the corner. Okay. What <laughs> advice would you give her? And in terms of what? That's a, a loaded you, what, question. What, it is a loaded question. <laughs> and I think I, I can tell you this. People feel like I have to have the perfect business plan. I have to have the perfect amount of money in my uh, account. I have to know all the perfect people. What's that one thing they can do today that doesn't cost them anything? And it could be just a mind fix, grind fit, right? Grind fit. Um, but what is that one thing they need to do today? Well, the one thing they need to do today is to prepare. First, prepare. Okay. But then the next thing they need to do, secondarily, Mm -hmm. is to be like Nike and just do it. Shout out to Nike. (laughs) Just do it. (laughs) Just do it. It's brilliant and simple. It's simple. You got to prepare, but that preparation encompasses all those things that you said. Yeah. But then nothing is going to be perfect. Right. So if you're waiting on a perfect situation, then you're just going to be sitting on the sofa flipping the remote control because you're just still going to be waiting. Waiting on that thing. Waiting on it. Right. And and so many folks think about, oh man, shoulda, coulda, woulda. Right. But just do it. Just step out there and, you know, but do your preparation. Okay. Do your planning. Mm-hmm. Don't skip that part. Okay. Because that, that's, that's right. Piss poor performance that's is what right. my coach right. used to that's say. That's right. right. So you got to do that first. Okay. But then secondarily, just do it. Just do it. I love it. Attorney Carly McCullough, thank you. That was a great, great end. I couldn't envision that a little bit better myself. <laughs> um, thank you again for joining Cynthia and I yes. on Grind Set. The episodes are never long enough. We have yeah. hundreds right. and hundreds, gotta awesome. come back. hundreds awesome. and hundreds of more uh, questions. But yes. thank you again for joining thank us you. on Grind Set on the Kazuki Network. Thank it's you. It's a pleasure to be here. Kazuki and Network. Keeping it real, right, and funky. Mauricio Calvo, who happens to be the executive director of Latino Memphis. Welcome to Funky Politics, sir. How are you? Great. This, uh, thank you. You're having as much trouble having, saying my name as I do say Kuduxian, so we're, we're even. <laughs> hey, look, I'm good on that. Yeah. <laughs> Reasonable people understand that a country is more than its leader. I mean, I love the, my home country, but, yeah. but uh, I, I, I tell you, I think people in Memphis need to count their blessings. Funky Politics on the Kazukian Network. <laughs> Thank you all for listening to me and Cynthia and attorney Carly McCullough. Uh, One of the things I just want to go ahead and share off the bat are the grind set major keys for the day. Uh, One of the things attorney McCullough mentioned was be great at what you're doing today uh, before entering any new areas. She was great 
at contract and compliance before she went and started her entertainment law practice. Um, when you're starting and looking to grow a business, make that growth both strategic and controlled. And every day, take initiative and act like a boss wherever you are. Whether it's your business, whether you're working for an entrepreneur, or whether you're working for a major corporate 500 um, company. Act like the boss wherever you are. So for our words of empowerment today, I found a quote by Maya Angelou that really inspired me. And it really talks to um, everything that Carly said today. Absolutely. So if you don't like something, change it. If you can't change it, change your attitude. Mm -hmm. And that's something that every entrepreneur needs to keep in mind when they're starting their business, creating that change that's needed. That's how you're going to be successful. Absolutely. Thanks again for listening to Grind Set on the Kazookian Network. Make sure you check us out on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, TuneIn, or your favorite podcast provider. This is Grind Set, powered by the Kazookian Network. See you next episode. Grind Set, executive producer, Epicenter. Recorded at Kazookian Studios. Grind Set is directed, produced, recorded, and distributed by Kazookian. Kazookian.